Hello and welcome back to the Lobo Designs channel. My name is Heather Lynn. I'm the owner of Lobo Designs and I'm here today with an Adobe Illustrator tutorial on how to create a split monogram design like the one you see on my screen. So I will be going over all of the steps that I use to create this design. I will recreate the same exact one using the same fonts and everything so that you can see how I got this done. So let's get started. First things first, as always, we're gonna create a new artboard. So we're going to hit Command or Control N as in new, pick the size that you want. I'm gonna use a 20 by 12 like I always do. And we have our blank artboard. I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit so you can see the whole artboard. So that's our 20 by 12. We don't really need it for this project. I just wanted to let you see what it looks like. And we're gonna get started just making that design right here in the center. The way that I created this design is with two different fonts along with the line tool. And then I paired it up with a couple of the Pathfinder tools to split out that rectangle shape inside the L. So we're gonna go through all of that right now. Let's start with the text. We're going to activate the type tool, which is the T over here in your menu. If you don't see that, it's probably hidden. You'll probably either see one of these. You're just gonna click on this one or you can hit T on your keyboard to activate that. The first thing that we're going to do is type an L, capital L. It's very small right now, that's fine. We'll change that in a minute. Once that L is created, I'm going to create a second text box and I'm gonna type Lewis in all lowercase. So we have the L and we have Lewis. I'm gonna resize these just so we can see them a little bit better. I'm gonna use the selection tool, which is up here in the left. You can hit V as in Victor on your keyboard, drawing a lasso around both of these, holding down shift, and I'm just making them a little bit bigger. I'm gonna hold these together make them a little bit bigger. Okay, so now I'm going to change this one to my Lobo font. I have a Lobo Serif font that I created myself and I'm going to use the, what is this called? Chin Up Buttercup. I'm gonna use Chin Up Buttercup and I have to actually manually adjust some of this in Chin Up Buttercup because I don't love the way that these letters line up. So while we're still in text form, I'm gonna highlight this I and I'm gonna swap it out at the bottom with this little glyph so that the I loops into that S and then I think that's okay. But if we zoom in, I'm holding down option or all on your keyboard, scrolling with my mouse. If you can see that the end of this W doesn't lead into the I properly. So when we create the outlines on this, I'm gonna do some manual editing and I'll show you how I do that. So I'm gonna zoom out a bit. So we have the L and we have Lewis so we can get started on creating this design. I'm going to expand both of these. So I'm going to draw a lasso around both. We're gonna hit Command Shift O as an outline, Command Shift O, or you can go up into Type and go down to Create Outlines. It's right here. It's not gonna show because I already created my outlines, but it's right here if you need it, right here. Normally the next step would be to go over into Pathfinder and unite all of this together. But as I mentioned, I wanna edit this spot a little bit. So I'm gonna zoom in and Currently, these are all in one shape, but they're broken up into individual letters. So I'm gonna break these up. I'm gonna ungroup or Command Shift G. So that was right click ungroup or Command Shift G as in group. And I'm going to take both of these and I'm just going to move them up a little bit so that they match up perfectly there. And that will work fine. And I don't see any other spots that I need to edit yet. So for now, I'm just gonna highlight all of these together and I'm going to unite these. So I'm gonna go over into Pathfinder and I'm gonna click Unite. And that makes it all in one shape. This font is a little rough on the edges, so I don't know if you can see this, but I'm zooming in and I wanna get rid of this. I'm gonna show you quickly how you can edit these points out. I have this selected, again, the Selection Tool V. I'm going to activate the Pencil Tool, which is N as in Nancy on your keyboard. It's also this little guy over here. Looks like a pencil. And I'm going to get rid of this by just redrawing this line a little bit better. Don't love that. The good thing about the pencil tool is when you do it, if you don't like it, you can just undo it. So I'm just gonna fix this. It's not, I don't love it, but I love it more. Okay, so we're gonna zoom out. We have that fixed and then there's one spot here that I don't like. We're gonna fix this right here. And then I'm actually gonna shorten this um, tail. So I'm just going to shave this down right here. There we go. And let's round this because I have no self control. Okay, perfect. So this is done. We're going to make sure that this is all grouped together, which it is. So now we have our L. 
we have our Lewis and we're gonna start sizing this down so that we can make our design. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. We're gonna hover over the top corner of this. I'm holding down shift so that I keep this scaling. And we're just going to lay this over here. Shrink it a little bit more. Right about there should work, I think. Okay, so now that this is in place, we're going to break this L up. I can actually probably make this a little bit smaller. I'm holding on Option and Shift when I resize this so that I can size it from the center. There we go. Now we can create our rectangle. So I am going to go into outline mode for a moment. I'm gonna hit Command or Control Y on my keyboard. And now I'm going to activate the rectangle tool. We're gonna to hit M as in Mary, or you're gonna hit the rectangle tool over here on your left. And I am going to make sure that my box is just as big as my letters are here. And if you can see, my smart guides are telling me where I intersect at the top and the side of the L. If you don't have your smart guides on, you can go up into view, go down to smart guides, or you can hit command or control U to turn those on or off. So again, I'm hovering right at that corner. I'm gonna draw a box and that intersects all the way around. And that's all I need right now. So I'm gonna go back into preview mode, command or control Y, and we're gonna knock that rectangle out. So we're gonna select the rectangle along with the L and we're gonna go up into the Pathfinder menu and we're going to hit minus front right here. So now we have the L, we have the Lewis, and we need to just draw our lines across, which we're going to do with the line tool. It's called the line segment tool. It's hiding up inside of where your rectangle tool was. It's also the backslash key, which is above the enter or the return key on your keyboard. Looks like this. And we're gonna draw a line across here and then duplicate it. So again, with my smart guides, I'm going to hover over where the intersect is. I'm gonna click, hit shift and drag. Click, shift, drag, all the way over to the end of the S, and then I'm gonna let it go. So now we have our line. You can't see it yet, but it's there. We're gonna edit this now. In order to edit this, we're actually going to be editing the stroke, which is over here under the appearance tab. We're going to change the stroke to black. And then we're gonna click on the word stroke. And what I'm going to do here is I'm gonna bump the line weight up. Probably right about there is good. And I'm going to change the cap to round it at the end. I think we can go one down on the line weight. Yep, yeah, that'll work. With this line created, we're gonna hold down Option, Shift, click and drag. Till it snaps down at the bottom of this one. Again, it'll say intersect, you're gonna let go. So now we have our bottom, our top, we have the L, we have the Lewis, I'm gonna zoom in. We need to expand this line. If you can see, the outline of the line, I'm gonna zoom in, the outline of this line is not being recognized yet. So if you go into outline mode, all you're gonna see is just a flat straight line like we just created, not any of the edits that we made to it. So we're going to select the top line, hold down shift, also select the bottom line. You're gonna go up into the object menu and you're gonna hit expand. Make sure that your window looks like mine and then click OK. And now it will recognize the outside of those lines. And our last step is we are going to select everything together and you're gonna go over into Pathfinder and you're going to hit Unite. So now we have, if you go into outline mode, everything is one. You will be able to actually cut this out on your laser as one big shape if you wanted to. You could engrave it if you wanted to. Just remember, if you're cutting it out, you have this little eye. So if you wanted to edit that and make it attached, you can release it. So let's ungroup. Now this eye will be all by itself. We're gonna zoom in. You can bring that eye all the way down. And then you can connect them together with the Unite tool if you wanted to. I don't love the way that looks. Um, I may, if it were me, I'd probably put this on a backer so they could keep the dot of the eye separate. But if you wanted to attach it, that's how you would do it. 
And that concludes this tutorial. As always, feel free to join us in the Glow Create group on Facebook for additional tips and tricks on how to use Procreate and Adobe Illustrator beyond the screen to turn your digital artwork into physical products. If you enjoyed this video and would like to be notified of future tutorials, please hit the like button and subscribe below. Until next time, this is Heather Lynn of Lobo Design signing off. I'll holla at you later.